The great Albert Einstein once said, make everything as simple as possible, but no simpler. I think Einstein also said, spreadsheets make engineers happy. I'm not so sure about that last one, but both those quotes are gonna be very, very important today. We're gonna make things simple and we're gonna give you spreadsheets engineers out there. My name is Tyler Lay, I am a concrete freak and I'm gonna tell you how to get sustainable concrete today. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And did you know that 5% of the man-made CO2 is from producing concrete? Well, there's a good reason for that. We make a lot of concrete, about 6 billion cubic meters every year, about 53 billion trash cans equivalent full of concrete, a sidewalk around the earth 1,300 times. We do that every single year because it's the greatest material on the planet. It's just essential to our life, and I talk about that more in this video here. But seriously, what is sustainable concrete? Let's define it and talk about how we get it. Now, it sounds like a brand new concept, but it's not. It's something that's been around a long time. The value of something is equal to the benefit divided by the cost. Maximizing this is all about sustainable concrete. What am I talking about? Well, let's talk about benefits. First, benefits may be about durability. It may be resisting extreme events, ductility. It may be just about making the owner happy. Now, the cost. We're used to thinking about the cost as money, but it doesn't have to be. It could be energy. It could be CO2. And when you maximize all these, when you get a lot of benefit for not much cost, you get a lot of value. Ladies and gentlemen, sustainability is a value. It's what we're doing when we maximize this equation. Really, sustainable concrete is about having maximum durability, long-lasting concrete, because if it doesn't last long, it's not very sustainable. Also, to having a minimum environmental cost, and this video is about this minimum environmental cost. I have lots of other videos about durability. Check those out as well. One cubic yard of concrete, at least in the United States, costs around $140. And we're talking about just substituting out. Instead of cost in dollars, we're talking about cost in CO2. How in the world do we find the environmental cost? We know about money. How do we find about this environmental cost? Well, it's pretty simple. Using something called an environmental product declaration, also known as our friend the EPD. What an EPD is, if I take something like you know, I don't know, a toaster oven or like a box of pasta or like a load of concrete. There are materials that's needed to make that. There are processing, there is transportation. And an EPD takes into account all of those things together and puts it into some categories, some costs. It actually looks at tons of stuff like global CO2, ozone depletion, hazardous waste, smog, all kinds, basically 23 different categories of environmental cost. That's what the EPD does. But, 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 it looks something like this. If you've ever bought some food, you know, it's got some amount of calories in that food. It's got fat, cholesterol, etc. Most people, though, they just pay attention to the calories. That's like the big one. And the EPD is the exact same thing. It tells you all kinds of environmental costs. But again, for concrete, most people pay attention to the global warming potential, the CO2 equivalent. But why don't we use more EPDs? I mean, why aren't they out there? Why aren't we using them every single day? Well, one reason is they're just not widespread because it takes an entire production audit to produce one of these. It takes more than a year of collecting data. It's costly and it's kind of crazy to do it mix specific because what if I change that mix? Then you have to do it all over again. Ugh! Yuck. Did you know that more than 90% of the CO2 in a concrete mixture is from the binder? But if you can control the type and the amount of binder, you will control the sustainability of your concrete mixture. I mean, anytime I can get things 90% right really easily and quickly, boom, that's amazing, right? But seriously, what is binder? Well, you know, it's Portland cement, fly ash, slag, silky foam, ground glass, or natural pozzolans. Could be any of these, but mainly we typically use Portland cement and 
some of these other ones. These other ones are typically called SCMs, or secondary or supplementary cementitious materials, right? SCMs. So what are these SCMs? Well, I've got a whole video about them. You can check them out. They're actually pretty awesome. They're actually make your concrete better, usually make your concrete have a lower cost, and people are actually using some of them today. They just need to use more of them. But we're gonna use something called a CO2 equivalent factor. This is gonna make things really easy to do. It is the amount of CO2 either per pound or per kilogram of the material. We're gonna use a simple equation at the bottom, and don't worry, it's gonna go in a spreadsheet for you. You need to know the mass of the binder. That, that comes from the mixture design sheet. You need to know the CO2 equivalent factor. Oh, this, that comes from an EPD. I've collected those for you and made a nice table for you and a nice spreadsheet for you. And if you multiply the mass of the binder times the CO2 factor, then you will get yourself the mass of CO2 equivalent in the mix. And we wanna minimize this and you have to sum this up for every type of binder you have. So let's focus on this. Where is this from? What is this all about? Well, I have summarized for you at least EPDs in North America. It may not apply if you're outside the North America, but these, these are EPDs in North America. These are based on industry average numbers, all right? So your numbers may vary a little bit depending on where you're at, but these are industry average numbers. I've got a lot more information um, on this website at the bottom, tylerlay.com forward slash sustainability. So how in the world do you quantify the CO2 for a concrete mixture? Well, first step one, you find the amount and type of binder on the mixed design sheet. For example, you ask the producer for the mixed design, an equivalent, a typical one. You look at it, you'd say, oh, there's cement, there's fly ash. That's what I care about. That's what's important. And then you type in the amount, type, 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 in the spreadsheet. And then um, what spreadsheet? Well, it looks like this. You put your masses here, everything with the CO2 equivalent already there. It calculates how much, it totals it, it tells you your replacement by mass. Again, all of this for free for you at tylerlay.com forward slash sustainability. So what do we want? I mean, what is a good CO2 equivalent factor? What is a not so good? Well, I am a concrete freak, concrete maniac, and I look at mixes all over the United States, all over the world, and these are good numbers. If you wanna look at status quo, as in you're not trying very hard, these are the good numbers for you. Now, we should all be, without trying very hard in this category, now, if we're gonna try a little bit harder, this is where we might combine a few different technologies together to minimize our actual CO2 equivalent factor we can get to here, and the elite the creme de la creme, the best of all mixtures, you can get down here at the bottom. Now, all these numbers are for flowable concrete. If you're using something called slip forming, like for a pavement or for a barrier rail, then you can reduce these numbers by about 50 for each one. Again, all this information is for you at tylerlay.com forward slash sustainability. So, but be, ca be careful because everything I just told you was the CO2 equivalent for the binder. Remember that was 90% of it. That means if you want to get the thing for the entire mix, you need to multiply all these numbers by about 1.1. Or you can get yourself an EPD once they come out and you can look at it specifically. This is a powerful, common sustainability language to ask for what you want and let them give it to you. That's a big deal. Ask for what you want. Don't tell them how to get it. Ask for what you want and use this language to do that. And this is kind of like ordering a steak. You know, when you order a steak at a restaurant, do you tell them, yeah, I want it 20 minutes on one side at this temperature and then 15 minutes on the other side at this temperature and I want to use pepper and spices and whatever. No, you just order a steak. You know what they might ask you? How do you want it done? And you know exactly how to say. We know, we have this common language with steak. When I say medium rare, I mean it's warm with a red center. When I say well done, boy, it's extra crispy. It's hot, it's brown, there's no pink. We all know, we know immediately, and this is what I'm giving you. This is the power I'm giving you for CO2 and sustainability. This allows also different CO2 reducing technologies to be compared 
in an unbiased way. What am I talking about? Well, I took some extra I showed you before and I used that spreadsheet and I compared them to see how they would be able to reduce the CO2 equivalents for different technologies. What am I talking about? Well, it's this table here. If I have very, very low SCM usage, this is pretty common, you can get about a 20% reduction in your CO2 equivalent. If you use a high SCM usage, you can get about 45% reduction. If you optimize your aggregates using something called the tarantula curve, watch for my videos on it, you can reduce that by about 14% more. If you use Portland limestone cement, you can reduce it by about 7%. And then there's a technology called Carbon Cure that's out there that you can use to reduce it by about 5%. Now, that's gonna vary per mix. That's gonna vary as you're doing it. This is for a typical 4,500 PSI flowable concrete mixture. Again, using all the tools that I've already given you for free with different mixtures I know they're, that are in practice, people are using today. Now, if you've never heard of reaching elite, like really getting to elite, you're gonna have to combine these. You're gonna have to use several of these together to get the creme de la creme, the best of the best. And I don't know if you've ever heard of something called Portland limestone cement, but it's a pretty easy way to pick up some nice CO2 reduction. And I've got a video about it here and you should definitely check that puppy out. But seriously now, how in the world do I make CO2, low CO2 concrete? Well, you know what? You need to use as much SCM, that's the stuff I told you about before, those waste products, um, as practical. You wanna shoot for like 30% fly ash, 50% slag, or a ternary blend using some fly ash and some slag. You also want to optimize your aggregates to reduce your paste. If you don't know what that is, you should check it out. It's extremely powerful. Paste is your cement and your SCMs and your water. You can reduce that if you get your rocks right. Again, the tarantula curve, super powerful for that. And you can use PLCs. You can use car carbon cure. You should use anything that you have at your fingertips. But seriously now, what does this mean? Well, this means you can understand more than 90% of the CO2 equivalent. You can get more than 90% of the CO2 right in your concrete mixture by just paying attention to the binder and the amount that you're using. And until we have EPDs everywhere, this is about the only game that there is in town, and it may be a while, in my opinion, till EPDs are everywhere and all over the place. And these tools provide a simple way for the engineer to tell the producer what they want instead of telling them how to get it. Remember, don't tell them how to cook the steak just tell them how you want it done. That's what this framework does for you, all right? But how in the world can I use this? Well, you can use it as, um, these are tools to help you figure out where you are now, what kind of producing concrete are you getting now, and where you ultimately want to be or end up to. And you can tell the producer what you want, and you can let them figure out the best way to give it to you. Use whatever technology they want to make it happen. And this approach can be used as a specification. It also, you can use it to give the producer incentive. What am I talking about? Well, you can just write in the specification, the average CO2 equivalent for the entire project shall be 475 pounds per cubic yard or 280 kilograms per meter cubed. That is not unreasonable. That doesn't mean every mix has to be that. That means on average. So on some of them may be higher, some of them may be lower, but on average. This is what it has to be and they have to prove it to you. And if they have a batch ticket, it's easy to prove it to you. And you can give them a bonus. You can say, I'll give you $5 more or pick your number per cubic yard is paid if you can drop that CO2 equivalent down on average to 375 pounds per cubic yard. You would be amazed that people will do for a little bit of incentive. Engineers or owners, pay attention. You have the power. You have the ability to specify and obtain sustainable concrete, but you need to be reasonable and you need to make sure you use this framework, I think, or an EPD to ask the producer for what you want. Hey, my producer friends out there, I love you guys. We can make this happen. You can provide sustainable concrete, but it may require you to do things a little bit differently. It may require a little bit more tweaking and understanding what's going on and not just using your good old off the shelf mixtures, but don't worry. There's tons of tools that are out there. So 
There's a free website here. It's got all these free tools on it. You should check it out and start using it today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. Make sure you leave me a comment below my concrete maniacs. And of course, check me out at Instagram and Facebook at concrete.tyler. Take care, everybody. Peace.